The governor on this Massey Ferguson 35 behind me way over revs. When you give the tractor gas, the needle on the gauge goes way over into the miles per hour category rather than staying in the RPM category, which can be really dangerous. There's a couple different reasons why a tractor would behave that way. So the first thing that we checked were some linkages. Uh, the owner of this tractor had recently replaced the carburetor, so that was somewhere that we wanted to check first. There's also a turnbuckle up here that we could check, but that didn't solve our problem. So we're thinking that maybe the governor itself is bad or the rod inside the governor is broke. We won't know for sure until we dig into the tractor and see what the problem is, but either way, we'll show you in this tutorial how to solve a governor problem on your Massey Ferguson tractor. Now this is a Massey Ferguson 35 behind me, but these techniques will apply to any, basically any tractor that has the Z134 or the Z145 engine, which would be a Massey Ferguson or a Massey Harris 50, the Ferguson 40, a TO35, lots of different models that would be covered in this technique. So to get started, we'll take the sheet metal off of the tractor and uh, begin. You can see that our hood is off as well as the radiator. You could do this repair leaving your hood and radiator, even the fan blades, on the tractor. However, it's really tight in here and I think it'd be a lot easier for you if that's out of the way and you don't have to worry about damaging the radiator. We definitely took that off so that you can see what's going on, but you might want to consider doing the same. Uh, we took our belt off here in the bracket we're leaving on the tractor. We just moved it up out of the way here. You can see that there's this linkage back here which will come off as we pull this cover off. This pulley I have loosened up so that will come right off. Then this cover you want to remove. There's a lot of bolts around here and then there's three bolts in the bottom of your oil pan. The oil pan will stay on the tractor but you need to remove those three bolts so that the cover will be freed up to come off. The cover is aluminum, so you don't want to pry too hard, and there are a couple dowels down towards the bottom, so you'll want to work carefully to get this cover completely removed. We're ready to pull this cover off because I have it loosened up. This linkage will come off, and then we can slide this out of here. We want to inspect on this cover. Here is the rod that I talked about earlier. Ours is intact and looks good, but you would want to inspect yours and if it's broke, make a replacement there. Now that this cover is off of the engine, you can see that the um, bottom of the engine is exposed. So you want to use great care while you're working now, not to drop anything into the bottom of the engine. I have a piece of cardboard that's cut out that I'm just going to set down here. When I take the cover off the governor, the uh, rollers may fall out. So we'll take this cover off. You definitely would want to inspect the inside here. I can see that there's some wear around this outer lip or edge, and yours probably will be worn as well. Then we have all of our rollers in here. Don't be alarmed if these fall out. Uh, there's a nut on the end here that I already have loosened up, so this will come out just used a socket on the end to loosen that up earlier. And then this cover will come off and all the rollers are staying intact. Wow, there we go. Now we're ready to put our new governor onto the tractor. This is a governor kit purchasable from Steiner Tractor Parts that comes with the shim, of course the governor with the rollers, the cover, and also a new nut. So we'll start by placing the uh, shim on. If you go right there. First, I want to tell you that I sprayed this part here with some starting fluid because that will dry right away and it will remove all of the oil off of the uh, threads there. So I'm going to spray that good. Then I'm going to, it'll dry pretty fast, but I'm just going to speed it up a little bit with a blow off nozzle here. Make sure that that's completely dry before we, and cleaned up before we put the new nut on. So the shim. We'll go on first, like that. And then the governor assembly here will rest on there. I already put some thread locker on my nut. You also will notice that it's directional. It has a little bit of a, a groove or a lip and that goes in. So I'm gonna get that started. This next step is extremely important. At one point there was a misprint in the INT manual which said to tighten this bolt to 75 pounds of torque pressure. That is incorrect. If you tighten it to 75 pounds of pressure or um, with your torque wrench, then you will likely break your camshaft, so you don't want to do that. The correct uh, specification is 35 pounds, so make sure that you uh, tighten it up to only 35 pounds. I don't have a different socket here. I'm going to have to 
<laughs> go the whole way with this torque wrench, I guess. Uh, so do not do the 75 pounds of torque wrench as it was a typo, only go 35 pounds. Let me tighten this up here. The next step once we get this tightened will be to put the cover back on. The cover has a lip, which is important that you put it into proper place. There we go, it just snapped. Let me double check that. Okay, we're tight, that's good. To 35 pounds there. Here's the lip on your new cover, and this is important that you get it in position as well. It needs to be at about eight o'clock with your lip there. Don't do it at six o'clock or seven o'clock because that will be when you start at the tractor, it'll break off. So make sure you get that at eight o'clock, tighten it in there, and then we're ready to proceed. While we're this far into the process, we're gonna go ahead and replace this front crankshaft seal. There's some felt here that you'll want to take out and remove, and then the seal is beneath it. I'm just gonna use a seal driver like this one that will fit right in there, and then we'll just tap it out. Put this over the edge of my board and there we go here's our seal our old one you can see is kind of damaged now our new one we'll put back on I'm just going to set this here and I'll show you the new seal this is a double lip seal which you can see a new replacement part from Steiner and you can also purchase a brand new felt which we will install my new seal is fully installed and you can see on the other side that I have the felt cover there. The felt cover is just to uh, protect it from dust or anything getting in there. So don't worry too much about it. Just put the felt there. On the bottom of my cover, you can see that I have a lot of gasket material. I also put some gasket material down at the bottom here too to ensure a really good seal. Since our new gasket only covers the top and the two sides, it doesn't cover the bottom. You can see that my new gasket is already on here. I was sure to use a razor blade and really get the all remains of the old gasket completely removed before putting this back on. I'm gonna turn the cover here. You gotta make sure that that rod's in place and I have my spring on there. Now this will drop down in here. Slide over and right on like so. And then I have one bolt here that will get started and work our way around. My governor is adjusted, so I'll walk you through the steps that we took. Right now, my throttle is wide open and we made our first adjustment here with this clevis. We adjusted this out so that the pin would slide through easily and then the instructions say for the Continental engine, you took it one more turn out and then your wide open throttle adjustment was correct. Then you can put your throttle on idle and you can see at the bottom of the spring that this pin that comes down is just barely making contact with that arm. That's where the adjustment should happen when you are on idle. If you need further help with that, there are instructions here. This comes with the, uh, with the kit when you purchase the brand new governor and you can follow these instructions and make your adjustment properly. Now we did reconnect the battery cable and we did start up the tractor and heard it run before we put it all back together as if there's other adjustments we needed to make, it would have been easiest to make it now. But our tractor runs great just how we would want it to run with an adjustment just like this. If you did your adjustment properly, then this rod will touch this arm. However, if there is some play inside here behind the cover and your rod isn't touching and it's wandering or moving around at all when it's on idle, then you could make an adjustment with this screw here. Just move it half a turn at a time. Just a little bit will take that play out, but you want to make sure that this rod makes contact here and there's no wandering on your idle. Our tractor is back together. Now we're gonna start it up and you can hear how the governor runs. There's our nice idle. We'll rev it up. Sounds great. Such an improvement over how we started. I hope that this tutorial is helpful for you when you need to replace the governor on your tractor. 
We have many other tutorials covering other brands and models of tractors available at steinertractor.tv.